Hey everybody, Jeff Dalton from Ask the CMMI Appraiser and welcome back. I've got a very special guest today. You can see him right now, Ron Lear. How about giving us a smile? You're not all serious, are you? <laughs> no, launch is over, workshop is coming up. I'm happy, Jeff. <laughs> Ron's the chief architect from the CMMI Institute. He's one of the brains behind the new version of CMMI. So welcome, Ron. Thanks. Glad to be here, Jeff. I think I'd rather be there with you in Florida, however. Yeah, it's not bad here at all. As, uh, apart from the hurricanes, it's a pretty nice place to be. Yeah. So uh, CMMI 2.0 is out. Congratulations. March 31st was a big day for you guys. Yep, we're very excited about it. We've got a lot of demand. Um, to date, we've had... Well over 150 downloads of the model. Um, we have, I think we just crossed over the threshold for 100 requests for enterprise licenses. So that's very exciting. Wow, excellent. I was just on the phone today with a client asking me all kinds of questions about it. So I think you're right. I think there's gonna be a lot of demand. Yeah, our, our biggest challenge now is to get out of the way of the, the intricacies of the, the downloads and stuff, let people start getting it and using it and getting it out there in the world. Right, yeah. So one of the things uh, that you guys keep talking about and that, uh, that we're hearing is that this version of CMMI is different. It's really gonna be about improvement and performance. Uh, tell us a little bit about why that is. So there's a few factors there, Jeff. Um, and when we did some of the upgrade training, my favorite quote now from the first round we did in Pittsburgh is we had several people in the classes, they had sort of, they were walking around with little light bulbs above their head saying, you guys changed this from a process improvement model to a performance improvement model, didn't you? And we said, yeah, that was kind of the intent. That was the design. So, and we heard that from a lot of customers, right? A lot of sponsors, people who are buying from people who you adopted the CMMI saying, okay, I got a level. How's it helping my business? How's it helping me perform better for delivering software, delivering system, delivering services and so forth? So we took a pretty hard look at that. We had an entire working group around performance as part of previously next gen, now version 2.0. And we built it into a whole bunch of different places. So first is in the evolutionary levels. Um, we got rid of the goals, the specific and generic goals and their levels within the practices. Um, and they are now organized by practice groups, which currently the only way we've done that is by levels. The levels are evolutionary and each of the levels build or subsumes upon the other and it builds that performance in even at level one now. So on day one, brand new organization, can they can actually start seeing performance benefits right off the bat. So it so looks like if, if you look at the model, it looks like I can get to that fifth level in almost every area, not everyone, but almost everyone. Is that right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's part of the... The solution too is to say, fit the model to your needs. It's not a one size fits all anymore. It's fit the model to you meet your specific business needs and objectives. So that's another key aspect. Um, and then I think one of the biggest ones beyond those levels is the fact that every practice statement now has a business value statement to go along with it. So it's a, what's the value of doing this practice to my business? And if you can't answer that, probably aren't addressing the practice correctly. So it's a nice litmus test for performance built right into the model. So we, we've heard about this performance report. Is that part of what you're talking about? That's the, that's the next piece. That was a good segue. So the performance report um, is built into a couple of places. So um, many of you are familiar with what we're lovingly calling the rainbow donut now, which is our product suite diagram showing the five components of the CMMI product suite. So there's the model, there's the method, there's the adoption and uh, guide, there's training and certification, and then the systems and tools to support it. We've built the performance model into several of those components, including the model, including the adoption guide, and including the appraisal method. So the performance report is required for appraisals going forward. You have to give it to the sponsor. We've had really great feedback directly from the sponsor that it actually uncovered performance issues that they were not aware of, and that the appraisal team wouldn't have picked up on if they didn't have that performance report. So that's a really powerful thing. It's in the model and it's in the adoption guide and we're telling people best practice, get this in front of the sponsor, get this in front of people adopting it right on day one so they can start thinking about performance from day one. So we've heard a little bit about this. If, if I'm a sponsor, what kind of things, uh, like give us some examples of what, what might be in the performance report. Yeah, that's a great question too, Jeff. We have got in the performance report now sanitized real data examples. There are three primary examples. There's a hardware example, 
There's a software example and there's a services example. And what it does is it says, hey, organization being appraised, what are your key business objectives? Give us your top three, your top five. Now, what are you doing to measure to show that you're actually meeting that objective? Mm. Where are those indicators? How are those indicators working? Are they going in the right direction? What benefits are you getting out of those indicators and the measures that you're doing? And has the appraisal team identified any actions you could do to make them even better? So it's a five-part performance report, all tied together. Um, it's very clear. There's a clear path and linkage in the, it's an Excel spreadsheet based report. Um, and it's been getting really, really rave reviews. So is it the appraisal team that is responsible for constructing this report and putting in the yes. information? Okay. Yeah. So the, so the best practice that we found is if you've got a team and you're looking now under 2.0, if you're looking at MPM, that's the measure, managing and measuring performance measure. I can't even say the PA myself. Managing performance and measurement. So that's the replacement that's for cool. MA yeah. 1.3. Um, that mini team was, is the best team to, to get this because they're looking at the data already. Right. And then the best practice is for the team to pitch that to the rest of the team. The team looks at it, gets consensus on it. And then again, best practice, the entire appraisal team briefs it to the sponsor. The last pilot we did, the sponsor actually asked all of his department heads to come into the room hmm. and it uncovered all kinds of really great data that they had no idea that they were actually doing. They were tracking four or five really key metrics, but they weren't actually seeing what the benefits were from them. They weren't seeing how the actions that they needed to take when they were missing targets. And they found things like, gee, in this one metric that actually tied into suppliers, we found out that three of our suppliers were contributing to 90% of the problems. So gave them a really nice focus to zero in and target on some real key areas of performance. One of the things I hear a lot, though, is that senior management doesn't often do a great job of defining goals and objectives that are quantifiable. How, how do we deal with that? Well, there's a couple of pieces in the model that are going to do that. MPM has been beefed up. Think of it as M&A on steroids from 1.3. So it is actually the biggest PA now in version 2.0 in terms of just sheer volume of practices. So we've really parsed that out. And then if you think about it, I know one of your favorite uh, topics under 1.3, governance and II, replacements for the generic practices. Governance puts the responsibility directly in the lap of senior management saying, these are the things you need to do to ensure that performance and processes are actually driving your business not, and making sure that it's actually yielding business results. So that's the, that's, those are the big hooks. So is it fair to say that an organization that hasn't clearly defined its organizational goals and objectives can't be level three or four or five? It will be probably very clear to them and very obvious to them that that's the case, yes. Okay, great. Well, I'm a little disappointed about MPN uh, measurement. Define that for us again. Managing performance and measurement. I'm a little disappointed because I, I enjoyed calling uh, M&A my friend Manda, M&A. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, now I'm going to have to come up with a new name for that PA other than Manda. Yeah, well, there's a lot of, uh, we, we, we struggled with some of the PA acronyms, as you might imagine, um, right off the bat. We've actually got a couple in the, in the future we're going to have to rename just because of the, those kinds of issues. But you'll find something, I'm sure. Thank you. All right, Ron Lear, Chief Architect at the SAMMI Institute. Thanks for sharing your wisdom about 2.0 with us. Ah, thanks for inviting me, Jeff. Thanks. Thanks.